Well, uh, today our topic is a competitive market. Uh, as uh, I explained you before, that when we, uh, as a business person or a business uh, firm, we have to decide uh, about the price or the quantity, how much we have to produce, we have to first take care of in which market we are operating. So competitive market is one of the forms of different types of market in which we can operate. So our topic uh, is first uh, we define what is competitive market and then we will see that how the firms behave or interact uh, in a uh, competitive market. So competitive market is a specific uh, features of the market in which there are many buyers and sellers. Uh, the, the products are homogeneous and all these features we're going to discuss in detail. Uh, but first we look at uh, that uh, how we define the market. So what are the features? What are the characteristics that makes one market different than the other market? Uh, so there are four fundamental characteristics or features we have to look at it. How many firms are operating in that firm uh, in that market? So that's a one way that we uh, differentiate or uh, uh, segregate the markets into different types. Then the extent of a knowledge about one another's actions of the firms. So those who are operating in that, uh, how much they know about the uh, other firms actions and their reactions. Uh, the third is the degree of a freedom of entry and exit that how the firms are easy uh, to enter or uh, uh, exit the market without any uh, restrictions uh, and the third and the fourth one is that the degree of product differentiation how the product how much the products are different uh, uh, by one firm and the other firms uh, so if it is a homogeneous uh, and there's no differentiation possible uh, like you we buy a gas from different gas stations but gas is gas we cannot differentiate but when we buy a toothpaste or a shampoo or these types of product we can differentiate that this is a uh, one particular uh, firm uh, toothpaste and this is the other one so uh, these this uh, this makes also the market uh, different uh, <clears throat> and especially we also look from the firm's market power so how they can influence the price of their products in the market so that's the main uh, degree that through which we can ju uh, judge that whether the uh, whether the uh, market is a competitive market if the firm has no market power and a monopoly that other extreme is where the market has a full hundred percent power that they manipulate at the price through quantity control right so that's the way that we differentiate so uh, a market is said to be competitive so when we say the market is a competitive uh, the firm has a little or no power uh, or no market power so the market power the firm have the less competitive is the market so as the market power of a firm is increasing the competitiveness of the market is reducing <coughs> sorry uh, the extreme form of a competitive market structure occurs when each firm has a zero market power so when zero market power that's an extreme or that's an ideal uh, competitive market and that's why we call them as a call it as a perfectly competitive market so perfectly competitive market is a market in which no firm has a any uh, market power or every firm has a zero market power now for example we discuss here that the two examples one is a market in which uh, we buy our uh, cards for our banking transactions like a MasterCard or a Visa card. So these are the two firms uh, uh, is engaged in a competitive business with each other like they, they try to get maximum customers or uh, clients uh, for their cards. Uh, but we when we look at from the market perspective, so it's not a competitive market. The reason is that there's only two major firms. The other firms are very, very small as compared to Diners Club or American Express. But though Two major but these two major uh, firms are there uh, so we can say that the firms are competing uh, aggressively or very uh, effectively uh, uh, competing with each other but the market is not competitive on the other hand uh, the two firms uh, uh, two farmers uh, growing cr uh, crop uh, side by side they have a no competition 
uh, with each other but the market is perfectly competitive so the, uh, close to uh, perfectly competitive uh, so the market is competitive but the farmers are not competing so there is a possibility that the firms are are competing but the market is not competitive uh, or the the firms are not competing but the market is competitive so we have to see uh, this now what are the assumptions of a perfectly competitive market the first thing as we discuss uh, uh, as i told you before that there are four conditions that is important uh, to fulfill the market to should be a, a perfectly competitive market or we can differentiate between the markets on the basis of those categories so one the first one for a competitive market is homogeneous products the products are identical it's not possible to uh, uh, to uh, uh, identify that this product is from this firm or this product is from this farmer or this product is from this uh, corporation so that's a way homogeneous products like i gave you an example of a gas uh, or a wheat all right so cost uh, the the second thing uh, there is the perfect information like customer knows the nature of the product being sold and the price is charged by each firm so they have a a complete knowledge about the price and the uh, product uh, the third condition is that the level of each firm's output at which its long run average total cost reaches a minimum um, is small relative to the industry's total output so each firm is operating at its uh, um, uh, efficient scale means uh, at a minimum average cost uh, which is uh, which can be attained very quickly or a very uh, small quantity it's not uh, some uh, some businesses are in which when you want to obtain that level of output uh, uh, like a minimum uh, average total cost uh, then uh, the output is so large that you capture in order to sell those uh, products at least you have a, a very large size of your market share in the market so uh, that's for those products it is not possible to be a competitive uh, market uh, and the fourth one which is also very important uh, like the industry is characterized by free entry and exit so entry and exit is free anytime anyone can start that particular type of uh, business and anyone can exit as well for example like uh, there are some uh, firms which are operating as a monopoly when they are operating as a monopoly it means there is a restriction that new firms cannot enter or cannot produce that product or a service uh, at the same time uh, the, the firm who is operating as a monopoly uh, is not uh, easy for them to exit the market because there are certain restrictions like uh, if they exit so uh, how they can uh, pro, uh, how the customers can get the product of that for example like here in uh, in canada bc uh, uh, bc hydro is providing electricity and it's the only firm uh, and no one firm is allowed to provide any electricity or sell electricity here uh, so it means that they are, there is no, uh, there is a uh, barrier towards the entry in that particular business, as well as the BC Hydro uh, one fine morning cannot say that okay we are shutting down our business because we are not profitable. So, so that's not possible because of uh, there is only one. Now we have to look at from the perspective of our demand curve, and we see that uh, here you can see there are two types of demand curve. One is a flat horizontal demand curve, and the other one is downward sloping demand curve. So downward sloping demand curve is a market demand curve for a competitive market, uh, and there is a supply curve, and based on that we see that the price market price is here in this particular uh, uh, graph is three. Now at this three price, it means that uh, and this horizontal demand curve is for a, a firm or a single firm in a competitive market. So at this price of $3, this firm can sell as much as he wants. Or we can say that there's an infinite demand for or, uh, its products uh, at the price of uh, 3 uh, But in reality, that's not uh, the firm's uh, perfectly elastic. The firms cannot uh, sell an infinite amount at the going price. So that's in reality, uh, theoretically, it is uh, what we explain. But in reality, when the firms are producing a certain quantity, definitely the price will go down because of the increase in supply. So the point which we want to make it here is that the horizontal demand curve in indicates that any realistic variation in firms production will leave the price unchanged because the effect on total industry output will be negligible. So a one firm in the whole industry is so small that their increase in output or decrease in output is not going to affect the market so much. So this is what uh, we want to see. Now we want to relate it with the, uh, uh, with the revenue, uh, revenue streams and we see that 
if we want to calculate a total revenue of any firm, uh, what we do, we normally multiply the price with the quantity uh, or the number of units we are selling or services we are provide. So if we are representing this as a Q is a number of units we are selling, multiply by the price, which is a market price, uh, that's our total revenue. Now, if you want to find out on the uh, the uh, average revenue that at what price on average at what price we are selling our product so we have to divide it with the Q so you we see here that the formula is saying P into Q that's a total revenue and for average revenue the formula is saying P into Q over Q so Q Q eliminate again the average revenue is pr price which is P and similarly if we want to find out the marginal revenue and minor revenue is, we already know that, what is a marginal revenue? So change in total revenue by selling one more unit, or we say that in a mathematical form, delta, delta TR, change in total revenue, divided by delta Q. So delta QR divided by delta Q, if it is one, change in total revenue is uh, P, so, Again, we get it the result as P. So what we get it from here, the interesting point is that that for a competitive firm, um, the average price, marginal price is all equal. So we can say that the minor revenue or average revenue and the price which is we are getting from the market are equal. Or if we want to draw uh, um, uh, the demand curve or a major revenue curve or an average revenue curve say they all are equal and we get a uh, horizontal line like this so if you can see in the in the, uh, in the right side panel uh, uh, AR which is average revenue is equal to minor revenue is equal to price so this is all equal so however the total revenue is increasing the total revenue is increasing so if we look at this uh, 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 table and we see that uh, the price is three, which is uh, same for the whole market. Uh, and uh, we see that the price is not changing. And uh, as we are selling more and more unit as an individual firm in a competitive market, so how much revenue we are generating? So for example, this firm is selling 10 units. So the total revenue is 30. If they're selling 11 units, the total revenue is 33. And if they're selling three, uh, 12 units, uh, the total revenue is 36 and 39. So what is an average revenue? You divide this 30 with 10, 33 with 11, 36 with 12, and 39 with 13. So we get 3333, three, 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 which is again, fulfilling our, what we discussed, that average revenue is equal to price. And if we want to find out the minor revenue, so from 30 to 33, the change is three, and the change in quantity is one. So three divided by one is three. So we see here that again, 333 three, three, we are getting. So we see from this table, from this graph, that the total that the price average revenue and marginal revenue are equal this is the characteristics of a uh, a firm in a, a competitive market so you have to remember this that the that this identity uh, in a competitive market for a single firm uh, price is always equal to average revenue and marginal revenue uh, so this is all uh, in this part and we continue in part 2 and part 3 for this uh, topic